All right, it's now time for our next session, Advertising in the Era of Evolving Media. And our speaker leads corporate branding and marketing initiatives as part of marketing and corporate communications team across brand building, events and properties, business development, strategic alliances, product marketing, employer branding, etc. As a part of strategic marketing, he's also responsible for engaging with media for both media planning, buying, and PR. He's responsible for development and execution of business strategies for the bank across wholesale and retail businesses and products. He spearheads strategic initiatives like banking advisory services, prop investments, strategic tie-ups, corporate branding, etc. He has expertise in executing growth-focused strategies within the regulatory ambit. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as I invite on stage the president and country head Yes Bank, Mr. Amit Shah. Good evening, all. Uh, thanks, E4M, for inviting me here. And thanks, Tips, for uh, you know, getting the oxytocins and dopamines up. I think it was much needed. It was a brilliant presentation, I must say. Uh, so till my presentation comes up, uh, you know, I would like to thank Anurag for calling me here. And you know, when he called me up, I asked him, so what do you want me to talk about? And he said, why don't you talk about uh, digital and social media marketing? This is what everybody wants to hear about these days, right? This is the in thing. I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, uh, things have changed. And, and I looked back and I reflected that uh, my six-year-old son uh, watches more content on YouTube than he does on TV these days, you know. The other day, my uh, elder son, who's eight years old, springs a surprise on me and tells me, Papa, show me your wallet. And he hands, hands over to me my iPhone. And I'm like, wow, this is great, right? And being a banker and my son is already picking up about wallets and phones is like superb. Then I was reflecting more that, you know, I have a niece who's 15 year old, lives in a tier two town in Gujarat. And, uh, you know, uh, she does, she's the chief procurement officer at, at her home, right? I mean, she's only 15 years old in class 10, but they do so much of online buying that she has the, uh, she's, she's got the title of the CPO, right? For whatever it is worth. So things have changed and changed how, I mean, that's the uh, power of uh, how the digital natives are, you know, kind of taking over the way we think and communicate with each other. And I'm sure that, you know, every moment that we are here, uh, there are more digital natives than people like us. Most of us in this room, I would assume, are, you know, people who learned this on the job, who are still experimenting and still figuring out what the hell is this all about. So, and you know, uh, just a few uh, years ago, I would wonder that Twitter was all about the sound of a bird and cloud was something that you saw in the sky. 4G was the parking lot where your driver you pick, would pick you up from a mall and so on and so forth, right? So things have really, really, really changed so fast. Uh, and like the previous presenters mentioned, it's not about when, it's already here. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just like to take a, you know, a show of hands just to understand how many of us believe here that, uh, you know, our jobs as marketers has become more challenging because you now no longer have to only figure out what to do with the TV and the print ads and, you know, the traditional forms of marketing, but you have digital, social, uh, you know, mobile, the democratization of media has gone around, right? So how many believe that it's simpler, better, or is it more complicated now? Yeah, I'm assuming I see a few hands there. Obviously, it's a little more complicated, I'm assuming. And I'm, I'm sure that some of us also believe that it is far more exciting now because it's far more targeted. It's far more uh, fun to create content, to see it go viral at times, uh, you know, to curate content and crowdsource it. For Yes Bank, you know, uh, it's a very different field. I was seeing the list of speakers. Most of them are from very iconic and very big brands, you know, uh, brands that most of us have admired through our childhood. Uh, and, you know, we are a fairly young brand. We are like a 12-year-old organization. So our uh, attempts at uh, social and digital media marketing started four or five years ago. Uh, but I think in the last four or five years, we've done a fairly decent job in terms of, uh, broadly speaking, if you were to go by just the engagement rates and the kind of followership that we've got, Twitter, I think we are the largest uh, bank right now in terms of followership. 
Facebook, couple of million of uh, million fans and followers, and so on and so forth in terms of uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and stuff like that. I think what I'm really proud about is in this short duration, uh, particularly on LinkedIn, we've kind of managed to build a fairly decent uh, SME engagement portal, which uh, was one of our uh, ideas. But numbers can only tell as much, right? I mean, it's all about engagement and uh, responses, and you know, how do you engage with your uh, uh, fan base or follower base? So I think this is where. Uh, we're doing fairly well and, uh, uh, you know, in terms of response times and a few awards here and there doesn't uh, really uh, harm us, so, so that's good. I think beyond anything else, uh, what we managed to do in this short period of time is to build this whole mindset of uh, thinking digital, right? It's no longer uh, you do something, uh, you know, on the traditional medium and then as an afterthought figure out what do I do about this now, right? So I have a task to also go digital, so what do I do now? So I think that's been a little bit of a transformation that we've kind of seen recently. But, you know, the way I look at it, uh, it's not so much about the platform, right? We need to take a step back and understand that it's how you communicate with your stakeholders, right? And the communication comes from your inherent business strategy. And so I'm going to spend a few minutes uh, sharing with you my perspectives on how business strategy and communication need to kind of go hand in hand. I think for the longest time, uh, you know, most, most uh, business plans were built around getting the larger wallet share of your customer, right? Even today, we would hope that, uh, you know, we can get 100% of their wallet share. The food brand would think that, uh, you know, I, do, I just don't want to be the breakfast item, but I also want to be the lunch item, right? You are trying to get a larger wallet share of your customer. And hence, quite often, uh, the communication exercise was driven around the benefits and, you know, the product attributes and so on and so forth. Whether one took an emotional route or a, uh, you know, a tactical route or a rational route was really the secondary item, but the core focus was wallet share. But quite often when uh, one figures, one chases only wallet share of a customer, I think you know, some of you would relate to, uh, uh, you know, this, this caricature here, right? When you go to a client, and I'm really not talking so much uh, as a consumer brand, but let us say as a B2B brand, I'm sure B2B guys here would relate more to this. You go to a client and you tell him that, look, I have this beautiful thing here. He's in all likelihood is going to say, are you crazy, dude? I'm very busy, yeah? So don't bother me with your sales pitch. I have what to go on and fight. And that happens because somewhere in the scheme of things we missed, the mind share, right? So there was this time, and I, I know, you know, eight, ten years back when uh, the whole focus was on the knowledge economy and people said that, look, wallet share will come. First, get the mind share of your client, right? So does your client think about you when he has his biggest problems? Does your client think about you when he's losing sleep over some of his issues? Or is he only entertaining you for his regular transactional businesses, right? So getting mind share was the main thing. And uh, somewhere people said, don't sell, right? Sell less to sell more, right? Don't be in the face. I think in the last few years, and this is where I go back to the whole change in uh, uh, the way new media is impacting us, the focus has really shifted a step further, right? It's not wallet share any longer, which is very important. It's not just mind share. But I think it is about creating shared value. Most consumers and a lot of videos that we saw and the AVs that we saw, I think the inherent message was, am I able to relate to my consumer at a more spiritual, cerebral, emotional level, which is beyond just having the top of his mind thoughts about me, right? Does my consumer relate to my persona as a brand? Because if the consumer likes what I do, if the consumer believes that I'm a responsible uh, uh, company, if, if, if I'm producing responsible products, he's more likely to pick me up, whether you're talking of a detergent, whether you're talking of a bike, whether you're talking of any product for that matter, right? Somewhere at the back of the mind, you want to know what is the larger persona of this brand uh, behind just the product uh, uh, attributes, right? So I think this is where we are today, uh, where human values and where shared values are equally or more important than just the uh, core attributes of your brand or your product. We've heard a lot of great B2C brands, consumer brands, but today I represent uh, the part of the organization, the bank, which is 
the larger B2B space, right? We, at the end of the day, banks engage with a lot of corporates, large size, mid size, multinationals, government organizations, so on and so forth. So it's a very different world. Yeah, we, we cannot talk of uh, millions of uh, views on our portals. Uh, you know, our stakeholders are far and few, right? Uh, as a B2B organization. Uh, you know, my corporate CRM, for example, would be all of 10,000 people, right? 10,000 organizations. Uh, even if I take, uh, you know, reasonably mid-sized organization, I'm keeping the 3.7 or 4 crore SMEs aside for the time being, but it's a very handful of, uh, handful of CRM. Each corporate, you would have three, four, five important people that you want to engage with, right? It could be the CEO, CFO, his team, a few influencers in the procurement department and so on and so forth, right? These are the people that at the end of the day are going to decide whether they bank with me or they don't bank with me, right? So these are my uh, target set. So what the hell do I do with them as far as this whole new media is uh, concerned, you know? Uh, should I continue to do what we've been doing in terms of the uh, age-old way of engaging B2B clients or is there a way that one can ride this whole new powerful tool? And I think uh, somewhere we faced with this challenge for a while. This was like the proverbial uh, four-minute mile for us, you know, where uh, some of you may know what four-minute mile is. Essentially, I think till around 1950s, people believed that you can't break the four-minute barrier to run a mile, right? And there was nobody who really achieved that. Sometime in 1954, I think there was one runner who kind of managed to do this, right? It managed it at around 3.9 or whatever. Surprisingly, in the next two months, there are 22 other guys who actually broke that four-minute barrier. So it was all about in your mind, right? So as soon as people figured out that it's possible to do it, a lot more other people started doing it. So it was nothing to do with their physical limitations or the limitations of human physiology and so on and so forth. So I think this is the uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, learning and unlearning that we had to kind of do to figure out how do we engage with our uh, B2B clients uh, using new media. So the way we did, uh, way we went about it was, you know, I asked myself, as a, I'm a, a you know, corporate client, I'm a B2B client for a whole lot of other brands, but somewhere I am also a B2C guy, right? Between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning, I am a consumer of various kinds of content, right? The moment I uh, get into my car, I start checking my WhatsApp, a few videos here and there. I, I go to my Facebook, I check what's happening. Obviously, the kind of content that I would love to consume may be a little different from a, uh, you know, traditional uh, consumer of various other consumer brands, but still, there are a whole lot of commonalities that uh, exist there, right? So if I were to be marketing to myself, how would I go about it, right? How would I get my, uh, you know, mind share, my uh, human value share and sh uh, creating of shared value and so on and so forth. Second, uh, you know, we also uh, did a little bit of a research and survey and figured out that a whole lot of CXOs actually consume a lot of uh, digital medium uh, when they are at their workplace, right? Even if you keep aside the emails, a uh, lot of content is actually not consumed on TV or print anymore, you know? Most channels are on mute in our uh, offices these days, right? People are just watching the tickers and maybe only putting on the sound when you want to really watch something on the TV. So, you know, at the end of the day, they are using, they may not be digital natives or pilgrims or whatever terminology, but they are consuming a whole lot of uh, digital content. So, I am not going to sell to somebody who is not attuned to consuming content in this fashion. So, uh, you know, this is where I think uh, what we do and what we saw in the previous uh, presentation kind of converges, which is, you know, I was thrilled to see that because uh, somewhere I thought that content-driven marketing is something that, uh, you know, works very well, obviously for consumer brands, but we are doing it for uh, B2B brand and so on and so forth. But it was interesting to see, uh, you know, the connotations and the comparisons between what I have to present and what was shown a little while earlier. But, you know, content can be also fairly confusing, right? Because there's so much happening and the moment you talk of content, the first thing that comes to your mind is, can I get a viral video made, right? So every time you meet your agency, you tell him, yaar, kuch viral idea samjha, yaar. how do I get like thousands and uh, millions of views going on what I have to talk? But that's not really the end of it, right? And at the other extreme, you also don't want to be in a situation where you're spamming your uh, stakeholder with content that he really does not want to you know, kind of consume at that point of time. So it's a, 
uh, I think it's a little bit of a science and an art as well on how do you go about uh, engaging meaningfully with your, uh, you know, B2B stakeholder. And I have a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, schematic here which on one axis, which is your Y axis, is your uh, level of engagement uh, in terms of is he surfing uh, or is he looking at you from a, a casual surfing perspective or way down is when he is kind of getting positively engaged. And on your X axis or three pillars are which level of, uh, you know, buying decision is he at. And if you notice the third pillar, I have said initiation because, you know, as a bank, as a banker, as a bank, the moment you acquire a client, you actually initiate a relationship, right? It's not the other way around where you close a deal, right? So, uh, and you know, we try to figure out uh, from all the kind of uh, different content that goes around, how do we make sense out of it? And I've kind of bucketed this into, uh, you know, five broad baskets, right? From uh, things which are low engagement in terms of videos and blogs and so on and so forth, to slightly more engaging stuff like, you know, you present case studies and you curate contents and uh, you create demo videos, right? And no client is going to look at your product demo unless he's really interested in kind of initiating a business with you, right? And of course, if all of us have come here, which is a physical event, right? We obviously are convinced about something. So it's it's a proof of the pudding that people are attending your, uh, you know, uh, in, in uh, person meetings and in person engagement. So this is what we've done. And I have a couple of case studies to uh, relate how we've gone about merging the old school and the new school in order to engage with our uh, stakeholders. So the first story uh, that I would like to speak about is the CFO forum, right? So for us as uh, banks, CFOs are most important, right? They're the finance guys, they decide how much loan, how much deposit and what cash management solutions they want. So how do I engage the CFO meaningfully using all the five buckets of content that we spoke of in order to derive meaningful conclusions out of it and slowly and steadily nudge him towards, you know, starting something with me, right? And getting his mind share and shared values and stuff like that. So what began, uh, you know, and when you think of CFOs, the first thing one comes across is, let's create an award property, right? Let's recognize the best CFOs in the country, which is a great thing to do because if you do it meaningfully, if you do it reasonably well, and if you create a lot of uh, credibility about your property, uh, the CFOs are obviously going to take notice, right? Who doesn't like to be get, who doesn't like to get awarded, right? It's Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. CFOs are obviously at the top of the peak, and you know, in case you award them and you create a wow around it, they're going to be excited. This is where you know we kind of created this property, which uh, you know is very well recognized, and people are interested, and in, it's actually going on right now. And a whole lot of CFOs have been uh, querying us, saying what's happening, when are the events, when are the awards, have I made it to the shortlist, and so on and so forth, right? So obviously a whole lot of buzz has just, has got initiated even before the awards, uh, you know, event has uh, uh, hit the ground. But we said that, look, I can't be satisfied engaging with my CFO just once a year, right? It's like a flash in the pan. You create an award, at best you can stretch it on both sides by 15 days uh, before the event and after the event. So what do I do with him uh, for the rest of the year, right? How do I ensure that he does not remember me only when he uh, is looking forward to the award? So this is where we decided that let's engage him through CFO forums, right? This was the in-person in, uh, in, uh, in -person engagement where we would meet uh, CFOs across the country, hold panel discussions and, you know, uh, engagement uh, activities. What started off in uh, 2000, uh, I think it was nine, uh, or 10, has actually now become a very large movement, right? I mean, there are thousands of CFOs who are active members of the CFO forum. They regularly participate. In fact, I keep getting calls, right? I saw a CFO forum happening in Bangalore. When are you coming to Pune? And, you know, things like that, right? So there's a whole lot of community that's uh, coming uh, together. And the beauty of this is that, uh, you know, even if I were to step behind and let the CFO forum take the center stage, the CFOs are now talking to each other, right? So there's a peer-to-peer -peer engagement that started uh, and they don't need a sutradar called Yes Bank to uh, make this happen for them, right? So that I think was uh, really heartening that the properties in a critical, uh, uh, you know, fusion or fusion state that it's kind of uh, going on on its own. Now we said let's go a step further, right? A uh, whole lot of CFOs in fact create best of the content. I don't need to preach them, right? I may, I may be a money doctor. Uh, or I like to call myself as a money doctor, but I think the CFOs know what they do best. 
and a whole lot of CFOs said that, look, we engage with you guys during uh, the CFO summits, but can we contribute some of the best uh, case studies and stuff that we do, right? And in the last six, eight months, we've kind of come up with this bi-monthly kind of uh, periodical or, you know, we call it CFO Insights, which again is very well read. And it's again uh, catering to the, uh, you know, the top of the Maslow's uh, needs of uh, the CFO that they are writing, they are talking about. Uh, the best part is in the last magazine that we're going to release uh, later this month, uh, CEOs have started writing, right? Because they believe that they can contribute. So promoters, CEOs, CEOs, uh, you know, the other stakeholders that are important to me are writing for the CFOs. So it's kind of gathering pace and, you know, somewhere we become a small publishing house uh, internally, uh, which is good in my opinion because uh, a recent survey by Forbes said 90% of CMOs are actually evaluating, creating their own publishing house internally because content has become so critical for them. And obviously, uh, how do you take it further? How do you ensure that this is not a yearly or a quarterly or a bi-monthly uh, engagement? Is when you take it online, it becomes 365 days a year. And here, my aspiration is to make it the uh, exchange for media for the CFO community. What they have done in the advertising fraternity is great. A whole lot of people actually uh, are hooked on to their news, their content. They contribute on E4M. I'm hoping that sooner than later, you know, our property on the CFO uh, engagement portal, which is fairly, uh, you know, uh, kind of becomes like an E4M. So this was the first thought process on how for the CFO community, which is fairly handful, very erudite, very well-read, very learned, uh, has a very sharp uh, opinion about most of the things. How do I engage with them, yet also get them to engage with each other on a core pillar of Yes Bank, which is knowledge banking, right? We have always stood for... Uh, knowledge banking as one of our brand pillars and I think this somewhere uh, exemplifies this thought process. The second thought process was, uh, the second case or the story that I want to narrate is, uh, you know, what we've done with our employer branding uh, related uh, focus. For us, young graduates from MBA colleges are a very important stakeholder uh, and obviously their alumni and so on and so forth and engaging with them meaningfully in a way that they appreciate is very important. So we used to run this transformation series, which is like a B-school case study and, you know, uh, competition and a challenge. Uh, but what started off a few years ago as a, you know, traditional B-school competition, we realized over the last couple of years that most of the students are actually now holding smartphones, right? They're all hooked on to YouTube and so on and so forth. Most campuses are now Wi-Fi enabled, right? There is 3G in most campuses. And they're spending so much time on social media. So if I were to do a challenge for them and tell them that, look, I'll come to your campus and we'll do all of this in your auditorium and then I'll take you to your TV studio, it really does not excite them as much as if I were to tell them that, look, you continue to do what you're doing. You stay on social media where you spend a lot of your time. I'll come there, right? So I will run the entire engagement for you on a social platform. So you no longer need to write a 2,000 word uh, essay. You please create a video blog, right? Because you love to do this. You have your mobile phones and you have your, uh, you know, uh, Wi-Fi's in your campuses. Please just create a blog for me with your solution and you send it to us, right? Next, when the jury engagement started, and this is a typical process that you would do with uh, B-School competitions, we said, can I get my jury on Twitter and get these guys on Twitter as well, right? So most of the students were obviously hooked to Facebook, but uh, only some of them were on Twitter. So we got them introduced to Twitter and we said that, look, why don't we engage with the uh, jury members here? Because every time you ask a question, everybody else is also benefited uh, with the same question, right? So we kind of got them engaged on Twitter and we chatted with them on issues regarding the case and, you know, any other questions that they had. And this kind of generated a whole lot of engagement for us as a bank and, uh, you know, the community as well. Uh, finally, when, you know, we had to do their uh, final round of evaluation and stuff, again, we said that on, let's try and do it digitally rather than the uh, old way. I think the uh, feedback that we received, obviously, you know, one part of it was the case study and the winners obviously felt much better than the people who did not win. But one thing that ran consciously across the feedback that we got, and here we were sticking our neck out because we were doing all of this uh, on Twitter, which is, you know, highly unforgiving as a platform, uh, was that there was 
fairly large amount of positive feedback and uh, very you know encouraging feedback that we received on twitter uh, as compared to you know obviously there are a few guys who are not so happy as well but i think uh, this kind of went off very well for us uh, the numbers obviously were very encouraging we reached out to like uh, 3 lakh uh, students and you know 10000 guys kind of teams participated we had 1000 odd completely filled forms and so on so for these are like humongous numbers by our comparison because you know every year we hire around 150 people from 15 odd campuses but this touched over 1000 campuses across the country the third uh, story that i would like to share is about the yes community you know uh, since the bank started the bank said that look we will try to do things a little differently as far as the bank branches are concerned we will treat our bank branches as community uh, centers you know like the good old medieval church where you would have a engagement happening weekly or fortnightly where people would come just to engage right not to sell not to buy and this has been a fairly successful program uh, running for uh, many many years now where every each of our larger branches right so we have the hub branches across the country we mandate the branch manager to do a program with the community it could be a resident welfare association it could be the chemical traders association or wherever your branch is situated just call them to your branch let them experience the brand let them come and visit you don't sell anything talk on a subject matter that really engages them so if it's a rwa and they're facing a solid waste management problem in that area you call a you know bmc guy and you call the rwa representatives and you as a bank you be there and you try and figure out what to do at the same time share with them a few things that they would you know want to do in terms of uh, you know society accounts or whatever it is right but don't be in the face in this process next time when he wants to do something with any part of banking he is more likely to consider you as a banker as vis a vis anybody else this was a thought process in order to you know not do what most branches would do every time a new bank branch is launched they typically put an insert in your newspaper or you know do some kind of a local activation to tell that look we opened a branch here please come and visit us so we said let's not try and do that let's do something different but this is what we did in the first you know 7 8 9 years of the bank of late in the last uh, and this is one of those uh, engagements that we do we did it uh, in i think a school or one of our larger branches where this was a student and college related uh, engagement but we said now uh, look we have 2.5 million fans on facebook right i mean that represents the entire country and the tg that you would kind of engage with and their uncles and their aunts and all of us all of them are there very well segmented right so i really need i don't really need to break my head around it why can't i take this whole experience uh, on facebook we started off uh, this project with around eight branches where we created communities in and around my branch serving area right uh, targeted to uh, people uh, whose residences are there and we are engaging them on areas of their interest on the community on facebook so these are some uh, visuals i don't know how uh, visible they are but uh, these are some uh, engagement activities that we do on facebook so the whole objective now is to get people so first four five years it was to take people on your facebook page and get them to like you and get them to reach stuff around you now it's the other way around can i get those guys into my branch right can i get those guys to talk about stuff and hopefully also come into my branch so i'm taking my online community hopefully into my uh, uh, physical engagement community this is uh, the last of my uh, stories and something that i am personally very proud of uh, and you know the whole organization is very proud of and this relates to the four, third block of uh, communication and strategy that i was alluding to a while ago which is on you know engaging with uh, your stakeholders at a human value and shared value creation perspective you know uh, we were thinking that you know how what do we do this you this country has so much youth so much energy but a whole lot of it needs to be channelized positively right youth are also my uh, target audience in terms of their first accounts their first salaries and their first loans you know so they are like brilliant community but i need to engage with them in a way that i don't sound that i'm preaching to them right youth hate to be preached they have had enough of it during their teenage they don't want to be preached anymore yet i want to engage them very meaningfully in a uh socially uh, relevant format so we came up with this uh, thought process we started this uh, 
uh, initiative called Yes, I am the change, right? Where we said every youth has a camera. Can you make a short film, two minute, three minute, five minute film of any interesting initiative that you see in your locality? It could be a random act of kindness. It could be about, you know, a, a road dweller who is taking care of uh, dogs and, you know, stray dogs and stuff. It could be about a rag picker and her life story and how she is trying to make a living and also support a few other people. Right? It could be anything that you really uh, love doing. To add to this, we also identified 101 NGOs across the country. Uh, across, you know, NGOs focused on different uh, end, end, uh, end goods or end uh, uh, uses. Uh, focus areas and we mapped 101 semi-professional filmmakers with these 101 NGOs. So there were crowdsourced films from amateurs, complete amateurs who don't have sophisticated uh, movie making uh, tools, uh, but you know they would form teams and they actually did a good job there. But we also got semi-professional uh, filmmakers, uh, agencies, filmmakers, so on and so forth to make good films on 101 NGOs. And we gave them 101 hours to do this. We launched this during uh, uh, you know, just before uh, August 15th, right, we gave them this, uh, this time uh, to make these films. They were given a topic just 101 hours before they were allowed to make a film. And they kind of make films on these social issues. It was beneficial because the NGOs were doing some great job, but there was nobody to tell their story, right? Uh, the creative guys also found a venue to do something nice. And usually around August 15th, you do have long weekends and stuff like that and holidays, so it's not really taxing on their normal uh, work hours. But what really excited us was the number of films and engagement we got from common people across the country. Year one, it was a very modest uh, kind of a output, right? We got 8,000 odd people and so on and so forth. Year two, the numbers increased. We got like 70, 80,000 participating on this platform. Uh, year three, which was the recently concluded uh, uh, edition uh, and we kind of had the awards and you know the gala night and stuff uh, very recently we had five lakh uh, people who kind of positively engaged with this uh, of course the numbers of uh, you know impressions and views and so on and so forth are in millions but i'm talking of positive engagement uh, meaningful engagement were around five lakh and we got like hundreds and thousands of good films through this so i think this is this is uh, uh, one area where we said that look I need to engage with my consumer, but I don't want to push a product. I want to engage with him on a meaningful platform. Uh, these are some actual uh, grabs of people trying to make a film, uh, you know, on the spot. This is not uh, for the Photoshop or for the ads, but these are actual films that we uh, took, uh, you know, of teams and people making films. This year, in fact, uh, we had movies coming from Andamans and Nicobar Islands and, you know, all the, I think, 28 states in the country and nine union territories, if I'm not mistaken, but everywhere across the country, right? And that was really uh, heartening. As a bank, uh, through our traditional medium, through our uh, traditional processes, we may not have ever reached to such interiors and such depths. So I think I would like to conclude it all. My timer also says that uh, time is more or less up and I would like to restrict it to the given time. I think till a couple of years ago, uh, for most of us, digital was an afterthought where you would do the stuff that you do for, uh, uh, you know, in your, as part of your daily course of action. And then you would say, Chalo, let's take it online or let's try and create a, uh, you know, YouTube version of this. But I think today, most of us, if not all of us, are thinking, how do we start from there and supplement it with, you know, the other engagement efforts, depending on uh, what you're talking of. Uh, it's not because it's uh, nice to do, but I think that's the way uh, the whole uh, environment is moving. So if you're not here, then you're kind of missing out on the action. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Shah. I'd request you to please stay with me on stage as I invite Mr. Ashish Bhaseen, Chairman and CEO South Asia Dentsu Ages Network and Chairman Postscope and PS Live Asia Pacific to please give away the memento. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a generous round of applause for Mr. Shah for taking us through the Yes Bank story. Thank you very much. Thank you, sirs.